The Isle of Skye is without a doubt one of the top landscape photography locations in Scotland. I dare mark a few locations. I've been to them all before, but it's always good to revisit and retry these places. The first stop's a bit of a no-brainer. Sligacan Bridge is hugely photographed. Everyone who's gone to Skye is going to take that snapshot. You've got a car park and it's right by the road. So, we jump down. My one issue with this location is you've not got a huge amount of choice. You're always going to have the bridge as the foreground and the great Killen Hills just mark the backdrop. If you had ever visited areas that have been photographed a million times, never skip them for that reason. It's still a great way to practice your photography. I've just used the wide angle here just so that I can get this rock just as an additional foreground. The bridge becomes the mid-ground and then the background takes you onto the Killens. Didn't have the best sky, but there was a bit of colour that I managed to bring out and, what say, exaggerate in editing. It's always worth exploring these locations. I decided to just take a wee wander over the bridge. And even though I've been here before, it still always changes due to the amount of rain we'd had. This puddle had formed and it was giving a brilliant reflection just to the coolants. I quite liked all the reeds and the greenery that was coming out of it as well. So I stayed and snapped a couple of shots here. It was classic sky weather with it changing every 10 minutes. The rain's literally rolling in as I'm taking this photo and just towards the end it starts pouring it down which was actually where I got my favourite shot. Um, the sun's coming in through the clouds as well so it was really nice. I didn't venture any further up, uh, there's a number of hikes that I've been on and a lot more that I've got planned that take you up those coolings anyway so I didn't really see the value on using up most of my time today in that area. So we got back in the car and carried on with our wee adventure. One of the things that I love about driving around Sky and the Highlands in Scotland in general is you get a lot of honesty boxes where people just post at the end of their driveway with my oh, favourite is jam, homemade jam. And passed a few, but unfortunately all that was left was disappointment. So defeated, I jumped back in the car and we just kept driving. The next location I had in mind was the Old Manor store. There's a location just before it, Loch Lathan, that always has these three rowboats in it. And I always have a wee stop and just take a wee snap. Sometimes they line up great, sometimes they're all over the place, sometimes the weather just doesn't work for you. The image I got here is definitely not a keeper. The weather wasn't what I was wanting, the sky's really boring, the rain's made it quite hazy. There's not much detail in the background and the boats weren't really lined up that well. So I decided to have a quick wee snack and I just thought I'd show you this. Look at that f***ing animal shoveling that in. Absolute disgrace. Anyway, back on track. The old man's store's another five minutes up the road. Thankfully, Due to my late set off, by this point it's probably about half past nine, um, so the car park had very few other cars into it. Just so you know, if you're going here during the day, it's going to be packed. I always get caught off guard with this hike, and I will call it a hike. It's not exactly tough, you're not going to need your hiking gear or anything like that, but it still takes a bit of effort. You're about half an hour, 40 minutes from bottom to top. But on the way I spotted another nice reflection. I liked the was that greenery that's underneath the, the surface and the way the fence is quite dilapidated and sort of falling into the water. I did stick a polarizer on to try and get more of that leaves to come through that are underneath. I also grabbed a quick snap in infrared as well. I think a bit more of an interest in sky and I could have had some really good shots. Uh, unfortunately the clouds had all disappeared and by this point the sun was pretty much gone. 
most photos you'll see the old man store is facing south and there is a reason for that it's without a doubt the most pleasing view that you get you can choose what your foreground image is i've tried to get these rocks to kind of act as a leading line just going up towards the the formation itself as i said it's usually absolutely packed um but it just shows once the hotels have started serving dinner once everyone's headed home and once the tour buses have stopped not another swell about. So we plodded back down the road and I have no idea what my left arm is doing here. It's just swinging hell for leather. Anyway, the next stop was Little Falls. It's about five minutes further up the road, if I remember right, from the old man store. As far as this, our famous sky locations go, this is my least favourite. I don't really like it at all, to be honest. Um, from where the water comes out, the angle of your position, without a drone you can't really get a great shot. Um, at this point, the sun was gone, there was just some blue light left and you can see the centre of my mini was just struggling, so it was a very quick stop. So my next stop was Nice Point, which is also a lighthouse and you can tell it gets me absolutely buzzing with excitement because they're without a doubt my favourite thing to photograph and Nice Point is one of the nicest about. On arrival once again the rain had started creeping in and the wind was non-stop but this is standard for here. There's a couple of locations, they all give you roughly the same view um, you can see just off in the distance the slight light still showing. I was very much hoping for less clouds so that I could actually get some blue light. However, it was just guesswork to be honest. But I managed to get an okay photo that I wasn't too unhappy about. I uh, went down, there's the steep path that takes you onto the actual peninsula with the lighthouse itself on it. Um, when you're on, just also make sure if you've got a dog, keep it on a the lead. There's a power of sheep about, and they are pretty bold, to be honest. Funnily enough, once Nix realises she's outnumbered about 30 to 1, she tends to calm it down and stick by your side a bit more. As you get down, you can have a good view at the lighthouse. You can't get into the actual grounds, but you can walk right round the outside of it, which lets you see most of it anyway. I just carried on past the lighthouse, and the aim is so that I can be looking back up towards it. Um, there was a bunch of these stone pillars, I suppose. Um, these always cause a bit of a divide. People who visit, and we'll just say tourists seem to love them. It's something to do, but there was a big fuss made up at Fairy Glen about how they shouldn't be there and they're unsafe. Um, to be honest, I couldn't really care less. So the shot I got going back up, I was really looking to try and get the lighthouse and use these pink flowers. However, the wind would not stop. I spent ages trying to block it and I just could not get it. So the flowers just came out bloody and I didn't really like that. Um, I did end up with a, a reasonable enough shot. It definitely wasn't the experience um, that I was hoping for. It wasn't the clear skies, it wasn't the nice light. So I did feel a wee bit deflating walking away. Um, but we carried on to the next stop. You'll probably notice the slight change in daylight. Uh, I did stop for a couple of hours nap in the car. decided to finish my trip off with a trip to the fairy pools, without a doubt one of the most rewarding locations in Sky. It's just a long chain of waterfalls and pools and you've got these glorious black cone hills behind it. So you're absolutely spoiled for choice as far as compositions go. This one caught my eye just the way the water's gushing out towards you, like your stepsister when a new washing machine arrives. 
I can never decide if I like to go for a fast shutter and freeze the water or slow it down and capture a bit of motion. So since shooting on digital, why not just do both? So this is obviously like post editing, I'm now re-watching this. Not gonna lie, I'm not 100% on the edits of those photos that I've done. Definitely got a bit of a heavy pink tinge um, in them that I'll probably change, but in all honesty I can't be bothered changing it for this video because I'm at the final stage and just doing this voiceover. Anyway, if you're going to do this location, it's definitely worthwhile of choosing. You can either run and gun, go up, free ball it and shoot away. I actually managed to get most of these sharp um, just holding it freehand with a fairly slow shutter speed, which I was pretty impressed at because I was pretty tired as well. Um, but if I had so I ticked all the boxes where I've got the location, the composition and that sky, I'd have probably taken a bit more time and chose fewer compositions and pulled out the tripod and made sure I got everything picture perfect. Where we are now is actually just right up the top um, of the fairy pools. So you've got the columns a lot more impacting in the image. Unfortunately the waterfalls get a lot less dramatic. Um, but then you've always got wee Nix as a bonus prize, so here's a couple of photos of her. So this is a pro tip, absolutely breaking the magician's code here. If you're ever having a lot of trouble getting the right composition, if you just can't quite nail it, the secret that no photographers ever tell you is that you just take your trousers down and you'll find that the composition is just picture perfect every time. Don't do this near a school. That was very much the last of the locations for the day. It had taken its toll, I was pretty knackered by the end of it. Um, the nap didn't really count for much. But I had a good few shots under my belt and decided to just start heading home. I knew the places were going to start getting busy, that was about half past seven. However, on the way, I passed this location that Thankfully, the light looked just right, and just as that sun was coming through those clouds, I seen all these tied up, ruined boats, which is another favourite, which I suppose kind of matches up with the lighthouses. So I spent 10 15 minutes just walking around, seeing what I fancied. The tight ropes were just absolutely perfect for leading lines. The sun was at the exact location, and the clouds just kept things interesting. So you can have all the skill you want for those perfect pictures, there's always an element of luck. Um, but anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. You can follow me on Instagram at 4 pads. I'm going to be putting a lot more effort into getting these videos up. So if you're looking for sort of photography stuff in and around Scotland and probably the odd foreign country now and then, uh, make sure you give me a wee like and a subscribe.